Has it happened to you that you have your modern frontend ready to talk to your SDNN core backend, but on the first request all you get is a course policy error? This has happened to me a few times, and it's a common issue that confuses many .NET developers. Luckily, dealing with cores is a very straightforward process, so today I'm going to show you how to configure cores in an SP.NET Core application. Let's start. Before jumping into the code, let's first understand what a cross-origin request is. Let's imagine that the web server that is hosting our frontend is also the server that hosts the backend that provides data support to the frontend. In this scenario, the browser initially navigates to the web server URL to load the frontend, which needs to render some weather data. The browser makes a GET request to the backend REST API to the same web server URL, to which the server will reply with the JSON representation of the weather data. The address from which the browser calls the backend is known as the origin and is made of the combination of protocol, host, and port, which in this example is HTTP localhost 5000. Notice how the origin in the browser matches exactly the origin of the backend server. Let's now move our backend to a different web server with a different address. Now, when the weather page needs to get rendered in the frontend, the browser makes a GET request to the backend at HTTP localhost 5007, a different origin. Since the port of the backend is different than the one in the browser, this is known as a cross-origin request. The backend will return the weather data just as before. But by now, the browser knows that this response comes from a different origin, since it had set the origin header in the request. Therefore, it rejects the response data with a course error. This happens because browsers follow what is known as the same origin policy, which states that a web application can only request resources from the same origin the application was loaded from. Browsers enforce this to prevent malicious websites from reading confidential information from other websites. Unfortunately, this is also preventing our frontend from reaching the weather backend. So, how can we fix this? Here's where Course can help. Course allows a server to indicate any other origins than its own from which a browser should permit loading of resources. And here's how it works. Once again, the browser has been asked to load weather information in the frontend. The browser sends a GET request to the backend's REST API, and since the backend is hosted in a different origin, the browser appends the origin header. The difference this time is that the REST API has been configured with the Access Control Allow Origin header, which indicates all the other origins that are allowed to call the REST API. In this case, this header has been configured with the origin where the frontend is hosted, HTTP localhost 5000. Once the REST API sends the IDS data back to the browser, it appends this header to the response. The browser now compares the value in the origin header it sent to the value in the received access control allow origin header. Since they match, the browser now allows the response data to reach the frontend. This works for simple requests like gets. Post, put, and other methods add a few more steps to this mechanism. But as you can see, the key to a successful cross-origin request is in the appropriate course configuration on the backend that exposes the REST API, since only the backend can declare the allowed origins. Let's now jump into the code and learn how to configure cores in an ASP.NET Core application. To demonstrate the typical course error and how to fix it, I'm going to create both a client-side and a server-side application. For the client, I'll be using a Blazor WebAssembly app, and for the server, I'll create a Web API app. So here we are in Visual Studio Code, where I have prepared this Hello Course directory, where we're going to be creating those two apps. And let's start by creating our service side app first. And for that, let's use the .NET CLI. And we can just do .NET new web API. And just to keep things simple, we're going to be using a minimal API, right? So I'm going to say minimal. And then the name is going to be Hello Course.Server. All right? So as you can see, on, this, on the left side, we have our new HelloCourse.Server project created right there. And then just like that, we're going to be creating our client side, which is going to be .NET new base or wasm. And then the name is going to be HelloCourse.Client. OK, so now we have our client side also created on the left side. And what we can do now is just uh, verify what exactly we got from these initial applications. So let me clean this. And I'm going to switch to hello course.server. So let's start our server first. So that then run. Let's see what we get. So we have our URL right here. We got localhost 5007. This is a random port that you're getting. 
And so I'm going to go to that location in my browser over here, and I'm going to just append the Swagger endpoint. And so here, what you can see is that all we got is a very simple uh, endpoint with a, uh, like a get endpoint for weather forecast. And if we say, try it out, and we say execute, what you're going to get is a very simple JSON response, as you can see right here, with some random weather information, right? So this is the typical um, uh, data that you get in, a, in an initial .NET Web API, right? It's a simple example. So that is data that we want to consume on the client side, right? But first, let's take a look at the, that client side very quickly and see what we got. So I'm going to click over here to bring in a brand new terminal, and I'm going to switch to hello course.client. So I'll do .NET run also here. So it's going to build our client and it's going to start it. And we got a brand new port, which is going to be 5028. I'm going to just click on that one. And that loads my client over here. As you can see, this is the typical initial Blazor, uh, Blazor application. And the part that we're mostly interested in is in this fetch data tab on the left side, which as you can see right now, it is showing some weather data, but that data is not yet coming from the server side. It's just coming from a simple file that has been placed directly on the Blazor WebAssembly application. So let's explore exactly where this data is coming from. So if we go back into this to your code over here, and I'm going to minimize this uh, for a moment. I have to just close this completely. And then uh, if we go into pages, into fetch data that razor, you're going to see that this is the, 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 the page that shows. And yeah, we're not going to be using this, uh, this asset. I'll click not now. We don't need that. And if you scroll down, you're going to see that the, the data is coming from this request here, HTTP get from JSON async, that comes from sample data weather.json, right? And that is actually located in WW root sample data weather.json is this file over here, right? So since this is all on the client, in the hello course client, this means that this data is, is all just living on the client side right now. So instead of that, what we want is for the client to read data from the server side. So let's take a quick look at that server side uh, REST API. So if you go into hello course.server, into program.cs, and if we collapse this for a moment, uh, this is the entry point for the, ser for the server application. And if you scroll down, you're going to see that here's where we have our weather forecast endpoint. And all it does is, is really create, a, as you can see, five elements of type weather forecast, where this weather forecast, all it has is a date, uh, temperature in, in, in centigrade and a summary. Uh, those are the inputs for, for that one, right? And all the data here is really random, as you can see, and it's based on this uh, summaries array over there. So how can we get our client to read data uh, using this re this REST endpoint? So if we show our explorer once again, and if we go into fetch data that razor, you're going to see that what the client is, is doing is using this object HTTP, HTTP client, right? So, which is by the way, injected at the very top over there, is being injected via dependency injection. Um, it is using that to do get from JSON async. And then of course it is using the sample data with that JSON file that you saw. So what we need to do is first let's uh, change this so that it is going to read data from the server side endpoint. So where is that endpoint located? If we go back here, that endpoint is just called weather forecast, right? So I'm going to just copy this weather forecast endpoint. I'm going to copy this, copy, and then back into fetch data that razor. So let's replace that where we have sample data that JSON right now, replace that. Okay, so that's the first thing. And then the next thing is that, of course, we don't want this HTTP client to be looking at the uh, at the client side anymore, right? We need to configure it so that it, it can use the remote server. For that, we have to look into the place where we actually register this HTTP client instance because it's, it's injected over here. But where is it registered? That's actually registered on program.cs over here. This is program.cs on the client side, the entry point. And if we collapse this again for a moment, you're going to see that this line here, line nine, is where we register a, a HTTP client instance. But right now, the base address is going to be the base address of the host, host environment, which is the base address of the, uh, of the client. So what we have to do is just change this address to be the address of the server side. So I'm going to show my explorer again. I'm going to go this time into uh, Hello Core Server, Properties, Launch Settings.json. And what you can see is that we have this profile section where the first profile is the one that is usually using it by default. And uh, over here, we have our application URL, which in this case is HTTP localhost 5007. So I'm going to copy that, that URL. 
And I'm going to go now back into program CS on the client, right? This is the client. And in the base address, we're just going to replace this with HTTP localhost 5007. And that should be pretty much what we have to do uh, to get our client uh, to talk to our server. And also notice that if we go back into Fetch Data Eraser, uh, the model that the Fetch Data Eraser is using to render the information, this weather forecast model, it matches exactly uh, the same values that we're using on the server side. So it has date, temperature C, summary, and temperature F, which is kind of a computed property on the server. As you can see, we go back to the server. If we go into weather forecast, which is declared down here, it's the same thing, date, temperature C, summary, and temperature F. So things should work just, just like that because the, uh, the shape of the data is exactly on the server on the client side. Now, if we go back into the client, one more thing we're going to do is just get rid of this weather.json file because we don't want that data anymore. So I'm going to right-click on sample data, I'll click on delete, and now that data is gone. So the data has to come from the server side this time. So let me open up my terminals again. And what I'm going to do is just stop my client. So I'm going to do Control C to stop my client. So client is stopped, and now I'm going to run it once again. Done it run. So this time it has to read data from the server side. So let's go back into our client over here, and I'm going to just refresh this page. And of course, we are getting a, an error here, right? So as you can see, we have an error right there, and the error has occurred. So how do you debug this? Well, what you do is you, you just hit F12 to open your developer console on the browser, right? And so I'm going to close this for a moment. And if you're in the console tab over here, so you may be in welcome now, but you want to switch to console, what you're going to see is this. Let me show you this. Right there, we can see the typical course error, which is this one over here. So it says access to fetch at localhost 5007, weather forecast from origin HTTP localhost 5028, has been blocked by course policy, right? So no access control or header is present on the requested resource. And in fact, if we switch quickly into the network tab over here, and perhaps we just refresh the page to see these things going on again, yeah. Uh, if we go uh, over here, you're going to see that we have this weather forecast uh, invocation to the server side, and you can see that the request URL over here, right, goes into localhost 5007, weather forecast is the server side, but the origin, so let me scroll down a little bit. The origin right here is our local host 5028, right? Which, which don't match, right? It won't match, right? So now is the time to go ahead and configure course to make sure that we notify the browser, which is the additional origin that has to be allowed, which is the origin of the client side. So for this, what we want to do is just go back to Visual Studio Code. And this time we're going to go into the server terminal here and we're going to just stop this guy because we're going to make changes. So we close this and uh, let me collapse this. So here we are in the program CS of hello world server, this one over here. And I'm going to close the other one to not get confused. Okay. And so what we want to do is to configure the, uh, the course services and the course middleware so that uh, we enable the additional header that, that is needed for this. So for that, you can use this builder object over here. So this is the object that you can use to configure a bunch of services for your ASP.NET Core application. And so before we invoke the line where we actually build, a, build this, this app, this web application, what we want to do is just configure one more service, which is the course service. For that, all you have to do is just say builder that services that add course, just like this. And that will make sure that it adds all the required course services to your web API. Now, one more thing that you have to do here is to also configure the middleware to tell it what is going to be exactly that origin, that additional origin that it has to support besides its own origin, right? So I'm going to just go here. And for that, we're going to be using this web, web application object that configures the, the request pipeline of ASP.NET Core. And we're just going to say app that use course. And then we're going to be passing in this options object that we have to configure uh, with this arrow function over there. And let me do semicolon over there. And then all you have to do here is just say options dot with origins. And then you want to specify the origin of the client side application, right? So once again, if we go back to Explorer and we go this time, let's go into hello course client into properties launch status.json. In this case, we look at the HTTP profile, this one over here. We're going to find that our application URL is right here, right? So it's localhost. 5028. So I'm going to copy that and then into program CS, 
on the server side. Close that. I'm going to just paste it over here. Okay. And that will make sure uh, to configure a ASP.NET Core in the Web API so that the additional header that is needed uh, is going to be appended to, res to the response uh, that the server sends back into the client, right? So that the browser feels happy about uh, loading data from this remote uh, additional origin, right? And so with that, let's go back into the terminal over here where we had stopped our server. So I'm going to start it once again. Server side starts. And now let's go back into our client over here where perhaps I'm going to collapse this for a moment to see better. And then I'm just going to go ahead and refresh this. And as you can see, right away, the data is loaded without any troubles. And in fact, if we go now into our network tab once again, and if we look at the weather forecast call over here, let me, let me expand this a bit. And so if we collapse this for a moment, we can see that now we have, uh, of course, we still have our origin over here, but now we also have our access uh, uh, control allow origin header being appended by the server side, right? Which is what the browser is looking for. Right? Now that it notices that that, that new header uh, is there and that it matches our origin, that is why the browser feels happy about this and it, it, it can properly load that data that is coming from a different origin, just fine. All right, and so yeah, that's how you configure course. As you saw, it's, it's just a few lines of code, and that will allow your uh, modern single page application, like a Brace or WebAssembly, or any other really type of single page application, to be able to load data from a remote origin. I hope that helps clarify the course policy errors and how to deal with them in your ASP.NET Core application. If you want to know more about cores and many other related topics, please check out my site for complete courses designed for .NET developers ready to take the next steps in their careers. And don't forget to subscribe to my channel so that you're the first to know whenever I publish new videos. Thanks for watching and see you next time.